In this movie, I will derive a set of equations called the constant acceleration equations. To start with, we'll need to review some definitions and then understand what is meant by constant acceleration. Then we'll derive a set of equations that may be used to solve problems involving objects with constant acceleration. So let's begin with a review of the definitions. Average acceleration, as you probably remember, is defined as change in velocity divided by change in time. To better understand this, let's create some axes and imagine that a car is undergoing motion that is represented by this blue curve. Notice that the vertical axis of this graph represents velocity and take a moment to think about what this motion looks like. If you were looking at the car speedometer during this motion, what would it be doing? The answer is something like this. So what does it mean to find the average acceleration for this object? Well, the first step is to pick two moments in time over which to calculate the average acceleration. Once two points are selected, we can see the change in velocity and the change in time. And inspection of the secant line reveals that delta V is the rise and delta T is the run. So the average acceleration is just the slope of the line connecting these two points. Okay, so what is instantaneous acceleration? Well, instantaneous acceleration is defined as the limit as delta T approaches zero of delta V over delta T. Taking the limit as delta T goes to zero means that the points should be chosen so that they are extremely close together. So close, in fact, that I'll just eliminate the second point in this picture. As you can see, as delta t approaches zero, the dotted line becomes tangent to the graph. In other words, the instantaneous acceleration of the object at a particular moment is equal to the slope of the line tangent to the velocity versus time graph. Here's a new question. Do you think the acceleration is constant in this example? Let's just look at one other point on the curve and draw the tangent line there. As you can see, the slopes of the two dashed lines are not the same, so the answer to this question is no. So, what does constant acceleration look like? Well, we know from the last slide that motion with constant acceleration is going to involve a velocity versus time graph with a constant slope. There are lots of ways to do that, and here's one example. Here's what that motion looks like on the speedometer. Notice that the needle is moving at a constant rate corresponding to a velocity that is changing at a constant rate. Of course, there's no need to begin the graph at the origin. It might instead look something like this. And the, cor the speedometer corresponding to that motion would look something like this. It's also worth noting that the graph could be decreasing. And when that happens, the corresponding speedometer would do something like this. So let's take that last graph and see what we can derive uh, from it. The first thing I'd like you to notice is that because the graph is linear, the slope calculated is independent of the size of the time interval between points. Therefore, the instantaneous and average accelerations are the same. And because the acceleration is constant or unchanging, I'll drop the subscript in instantaneous acceleration and just call that A. Furthermore, we've already established that average acceleration is defined as delta V over delta T, so I'll make that change. And then remember that delta V is VF minus VI, so we can make that substitution as well. The next step is to solve for VF, and when we do that, we get this equation, VF equals VI plus A delta T. This is the first of the constant acceleration equations. So, now it's time to derive some other constant acceleration equations. To do this, we'll start with the definition of average velocity, which is defined as the change in position over change in time. 
This definition is true for any kind of motion, not just motion with constant acceleration. Students often think that finding the mean of the beginning and ending velocity is also a reasonable way to find average acceleration. What do you think about this method? Do you think it's true? Well, if you're not sure, I'm going to try to give you a hint. I want you to try these two problems, and you might even want to pause the movie while you do them. And when you're done, you can come back and I'll give you the answers. Okay, so the answers to these two problems are 45 miles per hour and 40 miles per hour. I hope that's what you got too. If not, get back in there and keep working, and remember to use the definition of average velocity, change in position over change in time. Once you have these answers, you'll see that only in the first case was the average velocity the mean of the initial and final velocities. Why is this? Well, the key difference between the problems is that in the first case, equal amounts of time are spent at each of the velocities, and this is really the key to it all. So how do we make the connection back to constant acceleration? Well, let's think of this motion as being comprised of many short equal time intervals or moments. If we consider the moments at the very end and the very beginning of the motion, or the blue dots, we see that the average velocity for these two moments is the mean of the initial and final velocities. Likewise, if we look at the purple dots, we can see that they have the same average velocity as the blue dots. And the same is true for the orange dots. You can probably see where all of this is going. It turns out that when acceleration is constant, the average velocity is the numerical mean of the final and initial velocities, but this is only true when acceleration is constant. Let's take a quick look at a scenario where the acceleration is not constant. Here we can see that all the, though the average velocity for the blue dots has not changed, the other pairings now have average velocities that are higher. So the overall average velocity has increased. It's still true that the average velocity is equal to the change in position over change in time because this is just the definition of average velocity. But it is not true in this case that the average velocity is also equal to the mean of the initial and the final velocities. So getting back to constant acceleration, we now know that for constant acceleration, both of these equations are true. And so we can set them equal to each other. And the result, when you do the algebra, is this. Delta x equals 1 half the quantity vi plus vf times delta t. So this is the second of the constant acceleration equations. We can add the first one that we derived to that and put a label on here, constant acceleration equations. And uh, now we're almost there. We just have a little bit more work to do. What I want to do now is take a look at the quantities involved in these equations you can see that delta x, delta t, a, vi, and vf are all represented, but not all the time. In the first equation, four of the quantities are represented, and the only one left out is delta x. In the second equation, the quantity that's left out is a. And what we're going to do now is develop a few more equations that have combinations of these variables uh, and leave one variable at a time out. So let's see if we can find an equation that doesn't involve vf. Well, what we can do for that is look at the first equation and take vi plus a delta t, substitute it in for vf in the second equation, and once you do the algebra, you find that the resulting equation is this one, delta x equals vi delta t plus 1 half a delta t squared. Let's suppose instead that you were looking for an equation that didn't involve delta t. Well, now you can do a little algebra to isolate delta t in the first equation, plug it in for delta t in the second equation, and the result is this, vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a times delta x. 
and the last equation would be one that did not involve VI. I'll let you do the solving for this one, but uh, by manipulating uh, any, well, two of the first four equations, you should be able to come up with an equation that does not involve VI, and this is what it looks like. Delta X equals VF delta T minus one half A delta T squared. So these are the five constant acceleration equations. Use them any time you encounter a problem that involves constant acceleration.